Hey Bobos, what up? It's me, it's Steve. This is your Impact Wrestling review for August the 2nd, 2018. Now, I'm fully aware this review is on the later side of, of time. I get that. You know, this is right now Sunday as I'm doing this recording. Impact was like, what, three days ago or so. I did say on Twitter after Impact aired on Pop TV that I was going to do the review on the weekend. Saturday night, I went out with friends, had a couple of drinks. I didn't have time to come back home and do a review. I had to work literally this morning on Sunday. I just got back home a couple, like an hour ago. I took a shower, ate dinner, and now I am finally having the time to do this review for you guys. And I thought overall, this week's episode of Impact, or this past week's episode of Impact, was a solid episode. There's some stuff that I did enjoy. There's some stuff that I scratched my head to. But nonetheless, I thought Impact was solid with a great main event between the Lucha Bros and OVE. Um, we got once again Crazy Eddie Edwards going after Austin Aries. And they're look- and looking forward to their match next week for the championship. But as always, Mother Flowers, I wonder from you in the comment thread of this video. Give me your thoughts. On this week's episode of Impact, or this past week's episode of Impact, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, let me fucking know, alright? Follow me on Twitter, at HeelSteven. Now, before I get on to this review, I want to just give two announcements, just two little updates, if you will. I will be actually attending NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4 in a couple of weeks at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, as part of SummerSlam weekend, so if you, Mother Flowers will be attending TakeOver Brooklyn or even SummerSlam weekend. Let me know if you actually see me at the event. Feel free to say hi to me. Give me a what up or what up, Mother Flower, or some shit like that. It is what it is. Also, the latest episode of the Team Hill Podcast, episode 252, is finally up on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Podbean, also over at Spotify, for you guys to listen to and download on the go. I'll have a link down below in the description box to the latest episode. A lot of stuff was discussed. A lot of stuff. You're going to love it. Believe me. So give it a listen whenever you get a chance. So yeah, now let's get into this Impact Wrestling Review. So the show kicked off with a tag team match. A knockouts tag team match. Between Ali and Kira Hogan. Versus Sue Young a and a Undeadly Bride. I believe the Undeadly Bride in this match was Casey Spinelli, right? People were saying that on social media. So it was good. It was cool to see Casey Spinelli back in Impact Wrestling in some capacity, right? Now, Kira Hogan and Dally. I'm gonna say this about Kira Hogan, okay? And again, people might give me shit for it. All right, I think Kira Hogan is a good talent. Don't get me the fuck wrong. I think she's beautiful. I think it's great. That Impact Wrestling is giving the women an opportunity to shine, right? Especially women that are currently on the indie circuit, giving them a platform to get their name out there and all you want, right? And I get that. I understand that Impact also is a television program, right? They are considered by a lot the number two mainstream promotion in America or North America for that matter, right? But I feel like there's a difference between, you know, being TV ready and still at the indie circuit level. And I feel like with Kira Hogan, she fits that criteria of someone that I feel like is still in that indie circuit level, not ready for TV yet. You know what I mean? From what I've been seeing from her, that is, okay? Again, good talent, beautiful, all you want, but I just don't think she's ready for TV. The match kicked off with Allie and Kira Hogan battling off the undeadly brides that were literally surrounding the ringside area. There's a moment where Allie does like a dive outside the ring and lands on all the undeadly brides. Sue Young, who I've been enjoying because she's a character, right? Even someone like Scarlet Bordeaux, which I'll get into later on in this review. Um, Sue Young hits a panic switch on Kira Hogan and rolls her out of the ring. And then Allie comes in, hits the pinfall on Sue Young. So essentially, Allie pins the champion here, right? I'm going to say this. I feel like, yeah, granted, you know, it's a tag team match. But I feel like pinning the champion right now was way too soon. I mean, you could have had Sue Young just pinning Kira Hogan. That would have been it, in my honest opinion. But 
After the match, Tessa Blanchard comes out and lays out Ali, hits the hammerlock DDT. When asked why, uh, she pretty much said that, hey, if Ali thinks that she's getting a championship match right off the bat because of this, then she's mistaking. And I get it, you know, hey, you know, Tessa Blanchard beat Ali at Slammiversary, right? And, you know, again, you know, I don't think any should, anyone should be challenged for the title right now. I feel like right now what you could do is let Sue Young do her thing. Right, be crazy and wild and stuff like that, and spooky all the fuck you want, but have Tessa and Ali battle it out. They granted, yes, I get the story that they're trying to tell here with Ali, trying to get revenge for you know for what Sue Young did to Rosemary and Madison Rain, putting them in the casket and all that stuff, right? So let's see where all it develop. But again, I just feel like the idea of having Ali pin Sue Young right now is just way too soon. All right. From there, we get, I want to say here, per this list here, let me call my notes here, we get the OGs versus Jay and Brawny. There are two enhancement talents here. This match was a quick match, a squash. After this, the uh, we had King on the mic, and King pretty talked about how he told everybody that the two young boy bitches, you know, they should have saw us coming, and that now the OGs, they run the streets. They are the streets, and then out came LAX with Conan. They came out with axes. There was a giant fucking brawl. People were going insane. I like this to some extent. At the same time, you got to remember, the OGs took away the tag title. They kidnapped the tag title. They spray-painted the tag titles, you know? And out comes LAX with axes and all, and the tag team belts are right there. And they left them there. Didn't even bother picking them up. Their own tag titles, by the way. And I get the whole thing. Hey, this feud is bigger than the tag title. But at the same time, this is your championship here. A championship should not be left off like a fucking prop. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. I'm just fucking saying. But nonetheless, besides that, I enjoyed this segment. I thought it was great. I've been enjoying this build up, this story of the OGs and LAX. If it was up to me, though, however, Mother Flowers, this is my honest opinion. I said this during my Slimiversary review. I'm going to say here again. I would switch Conan and King and put King with the uh, the new LAX between Santana and Ortiz and put Conan with the OGs of Homicide and Hernandez. That's the only thing I would, I would switch here. But other than that, I've been enjoying this and I cannot wait to see what else they fucking do on Impact Wrestling as we continue going forward with this. Uh, after this, we get a backstage, you know, Conan telling them, telling that is of, 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 of Ortiz and Santana that, hey, they fell for it. They fell for it. This was their plan all along of the OGs, and they fell for it, and they're going to get the revenge, believe it or not, something like that capacity. From there, we get the global wrestling uh, match, if you will, the highlight match. And I'm going to say this to me. Whenever Impact on Impact, that is, right? No pun intended there. Uh, whenever they showcase the Global Wrestling Network match of the week, to me, that's the piss break of the show. Like, I understand that you want to promote the ne- the Global Wrestling Network, right? You want people to get it, which is fun, which is great. But at the same time, you shouldn't, you know, put a random match on your episode of Impact. Because what that tells me is, hey, you guys didn't tape a lot of stuff. So we're putting this random match, which by the way was Jushin Thunder Liger versus P.D. Williams, which was fine for all you want for to get that nostalgia from like the old TNA. But at the same time, hey, this is Impact Wrestling. This is a new regime. If you really want to showcase these old classic matches, why not put it up on the YouTube channel? You know, why not put it out there on Facebook, on your Facebook page? That's a free match. You know, Ring of Honor does that as well sometimes. They do like the throwback Thursdays, right? I don't, know if they, I don't know if they still do it or not, but they'll post like a classic match from back in the day every single Thursday on the YouTube channel, you know? Now, granted, I'm not sure if they're promoting Honor Club, but I'm pretty sure if you're Impact Wrestling, you could do something in that capacity, right? Showcase a classic match from yesteryear on Thursdays, right? Or Friday for Flashback Friday as well, and promote the GWN. Why the fuck not? Makes a lot of sense to me, if you ask me, for my honest opinion. But after this, we get OVE. 
um, talking about how they're going to make things personal later on tonight between the Lucha Bros. And again, a great main event. And again, not for nothing, I understand that they're doing this Ring of Honor versus Impact Wrestling, like this fucking, you know, super show on the Jericho Cruise. I understand all that. But if there's one match I could, I would love to see happen one day, right? This should be like an indie promoter's dream match. Hell, even in PWG, why the fuck not, right? Maybe, th- maybe it's happened before. I could be wrong on this. The Elite, Kenny and the Young Bucks versus OVE with Sammy Callahan. Tell me that would not be a fun match to watch. Tell me I'm wrong on that, please. That should be a dream match for any indie promoter out there right now. Hell, even as part of WrestleCon one day. I'm just saying. Just fucking saying, okay? Um, We get, from there, we get um the Desi Hit Squad versus KM and Falaba. Now, you guys know me. I have a soft spot for KM and Falaba. I've been watching them wrestle here on the local, you know, independent here in Jersey for Russell Pro. Been a huge fan of Kevin Matthews and Fallabot. I feel like they've been tearing it up. And I'm happy to see them in some capacity on television that for Impact Wrestling here. And I get the story here as well. That, hey, you know, KM wants Fallabot to show off his bad side, right? His mean streak, that is, right? But I'll be real about it, too. I get what they're trying to do as well. They're trying to push the Desi Hit Squad to be a future contender for the tag titles right now. But I'll be real about it. They're not doing it for me. They're really not. The match was there. Um, it ended up with Falaba for some reason distracting the referee when KM had the match won. And the Dusty Hit Squad hit their double team finisher on Kevin Matthews. Or KM, I'm sorry, KM. I'm, I'm so used to calling him Kevin Matthews for, for some fucking reason, right? And they got the 1 2 3. And that's how that match ended. So the Dusty Hit Squad got the win. While again, KM was just lying there and just fucking like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> there you go with that. After this, we get Anthony Corelli. I'm sorry, Santino Morella for you, for you this little calm, Santino. Uh, pre- prepping up his student to get ready for his championship. Because again, Dustin Cameron, right, was scheduled to face, or really scheduled to face in this, in this episode of Impact, Austin Aries for the world title, right? And... He is telling him that this is an opportunity to shine. It's his moment and make the best of it right now. Facing for the world title. Uh, they are showing backstage Austin Aries. Uh, talking about how when he came back to Impact, he beat a high caliber opponent like Eli Drake. And he's now worried about facing a kid like Dustin and Cameron tonight. And backstage, we also see Johnny Impact being interviewed by Alicia. Alicia Atude, by the way. Who, by the way, has a great YouTube channel. You guys can go check out. Um, saying that, you know, she asked him if she if he's not worried about if he's worried about Congo Kong. And he goes on to say that he's here to prove that he's the best. But Kong is here to hurt people. And he tried he tried to do that to him, that being Johnny Impact. And literally this whole thing is hey, Johnny Impact wants to get revenge on Congo Kong for what he did. And Jimmy Jacob comes in, and he pretty much tried to take the sunglasses off from Johnny Impact. And he says that he's trying to be a nice guy, but Impact, but Johnny Impact, that is, drills him. Literally lays him out with the right hand and tells him that he wants Kong. And he's not going to ask again and walks away. Um, again, listen, this isn't for him to do right now. People were be saying, oh, hey, he should be fighting for the championship. Honestly, no. Again, this is something for him to do right now. Maybe somewhere down the road, Johnny Impact gets a shot at the championship, but we'll see. Um, after this, we get uh, Austin Aries versus Dustin Cameron. And Dustin Cameron comes out. He's fucking pumped. He's ready to go. Austin Aries comes out, right? And he's wearing a black polo shirt. He's not even his fucking wrestling gear, eating a banana. Like, he has, he's not worried about anything. And the match starts, and Austin Aries, he's allowing Dustin Cameron to get some offense here, but eventually does some dirty tactic and lays him out, like drills him and shit with an elbow or the right hand, hits a brain buster, and then goes for another one, or he's about to go for another one. And Anthony Corelli, Santino, for though you still want to call him Santino, 
gets up on the apron and throws in the towel. And I get it for some people. It's like, oh, why is he doing that? It's so dumb. It's so stupid. Two things. Number one, he's looking out for the safety of his student. At the same time, the visual of Aries hitting that brain buster on this kid was sick. So the same way, hey, we're showcasing that, hey, the brain buster is a very, very sick move here, right? And then you see Austin Aries demanding credit again. The ring gets in his face. He wants him to hit him. People are chanting Cobra, right? And then uh, the Anthony Corelli hits a low blow on Aries and walks out. Or Aries walks out, right? And from behind, out comes crazy Eddie Edward with the kendo stick. He tries to hit the DDT on the stage, but Aries makes the escape here. We find out the next week is going to be Austin Aries versus Eddie Edwards for the world title. That should really be a fun match to watch next week on Impact. Or this week on Impact. Because again, right now it's a new week. So this Thursday on Impact, Eddie Edwards versus Austin Aries for the world title. Should be a very, very fun match to watch. Backstage though, you see Eddie Edwards trying to, you know, talk to his wife. And his wife feels like he is still crazy. And... Again, their story here is that again, apparently Eddie Edwards is still insane per the per the eyes of Alicia Edwards. So there you go with that. We finally get the return of Scarlett Bordeaux after last week. And you remember last week she called Alicia a toot a five and told her to, to shut up five a ten is talking. Right? So this week they found some random nerd, some random schlep who's a fucking nerd. A fucking geek, right? Come out there, nervous as all hell. They bring out Scarlet Bordeaux, who wore this beautiful dress that was high up to the leg. It looked like she wasn't wearing any underwear. And this guy got nervous, started sweating. Uh, and she asked, "What was his name?" And he's like, "Bo, Bo, 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 Bo." Like she's like he's saying Bobo here, right? It just tells him to leave. And just here, thing with Scarlet Bordeaux, okay? And I did say last week that I just don't see her moving the needle. I stand corrected now. Scarlett Bordeaux right now is probably one of the best characters that Impact Wrestling has right now on its roster. Don't get me wrong. She's a character. And that's not a bad thing. You know, I get it. All the women, they want to be this wrestler. Yeah, I'm all about the in-ring. Here's Scarlett Bordeaux, who's the complete opposite. Now, listen. I haven't really seen Scarlett Bordeaux wrestle like that, but from what I've been told by people that have watched, her in-ring work really isn't that much to brag about. But at this point in juncture, who gives a fuck? I'm not saying, hey, let's give her the knockouts title, because that's like, no. But at a time where we're in this whole Me Too movement bullshit, women trying to be conservative and this and whatnot, here's Scarlett Bordeaux. You know, not being ashamed of being sexy and, you know, just showing it all out there. And I love that. At a time like this, I think it's fucking awesome. And we'll see. Will she eventually get in the ring? I don't fucking know. But I like what we're seeing here. Okay, we're, we like what we're seeing here and shit. And I just see good things happening for her right now. I really, really do. Uh, backstage, we get Grado with Katarina and Joe Henry. Talk about how outrageous Eli's behavior is. And then they then he sees Eli and goes over to challenge Eli to a tag match with Grado and Hendry against Drake and whoever he picked as a partner. Drake goes on and drags Trevor Lee and Caleb Connolly and said it doesn't matter which one he takes as a partner. He hopes Grado and Hendry have their pissing pants on because he has something for them. And he definitely has something for Katarina. Now, this whole time, right, I get the story here, right? They're doing this whole thing where, hey, Grado is dating Katarina. But the rumors and innuendo is that Katarina has something with Joe Henry. And Eli Drake is instigating all that, right? And I'm going to say this, too. Yes, Impact Wrestling, you have signed Eli Drake to a new deal to stay in Impact Wrestling, which I think is awesome. I think it's great. But what the fuck are you doing with Eli Drake right now? Why the fuck is Eli Drake right now being relegated to doing a program with Grado? Now, I know that the first time 
this that he did a program with Grado. Like I remember, like I think it was two years ago or so, during the whole Feast of Fire where Grado got fired apparently, and Eli Drake stole the briefcase and shit like that. That's fine and dandy. But let's be real about it right now. Eli Drake is one of the best talent that Impact has right now on their roster. Right? Eli Drake, at this point, being a former world champion, should not be relegated to be feuding with Grado right now. As a matter of fact, like I said with Kira Hogan, how Kira Hogan, you know, is not ready for TV. Grado is in the exact same category. To me, Grado should just be, I think his shtick, his gimmick, it works perfectly on the indie circuit. Like ICW and Progress and your local mom and pop indie fed. I feel like Grado is a waste of TV time, in my honest opinion. And I know for a fact, for all you Impact diehards, you probably feel the same way. Don't sit there and tell me that Grado's a fucking great talent because he's not. I'm sorry, he's fucking not. I get it, he's over as fuck on the indies, but that's as far as he should get. But I think it's a damn shame right now that they're wasting Eli Drake in this ridiculous program right now. Fucking ridiculous. And I get it, Eli Drake is a fucking instigator, so they need that person. But you know what? You could use someone like Trevor Lee for this shit, or someone like Caleb Connolly, or something like that. You know what I mean? Someone that really is doing meaningless shit on the roster right now, right? That's my honest opinion. We get the match. The match for what it was, it was there. Nothing really much to brag about here. There was a moment where I guess um, they tried to attack Katarina, something like that, and Joe Henry wanted to check up on Katarina. And Grado got distracted by this. And Eli goes in, hit the gravy train for the one, two, three. So literally here, they pin Grado, and Joe Henry was nowhere to be found. But then after this, all oh, it's all A-OK and shit. And Griddle literally hits a, gives a big-ass kiss to Katarina here. Listen, the, the faster they end the story, the better off it's going to be. I'm, I'm just saying right now. Because uh, seriously, again, they're wasting Eli Drake on this ridiculous program right now, in my honest opinion. Uh, the Disney Hit Squad are backstage. They're gloating over the victory tonight. Oh, they're, they're, they're grading over the fucking victory. Right? They're gloating over it. And it's saying they're going to be champions. Gama comes in and slaps the hell out of them and tells them that they uh, that they suck. And then he leaves and he comes back and slapped them some more before leaving again. That's funny as hell. Like, how are you going to tell like, your own kids like they fucking suck after winning a match, right? Motivation, motherfucker. That's fucking motivation, yo, for real. You got to admire fucking motivation at the time, I'm telling you. Um, After this, we... Uh, we look back at last week's Brian Cage and winning the active, defending the X Division title over Matt Seidel. Uh, Matt Seidel is, is popped up. He says that, again, Cage is now the new undisputed X Division champion. And that the division chose him. He's proud of the time that he's put in as champion. And what, what he lost is just a material thing. The material things mean nothing to him. He knew he would lose it someday. But Cage showed him that there's more in store for him. At the X Division, then the X Division title isn't its his final destination. There's something bigger. He thanks Brian Cage and the X Division title and realizes that he needs to open his third eye even wider and question everything. Everything. Now, at this point in juncture, I'm just going to say this, okay? This is my honest opinion. Um,. At this point, you know what? If you really want to move Matt Seidel to the world title scene, go right ahead. Why the fuck not? But the way I look at this hap- the way I see the-, the way I see things happening right now with Brian Cage, even though you I already know I'm not big on the idea of him being the Activision champion, it is what it is. But you know what? If as long as it means that he's going to invoke option C, then I'm fine with this. I am totally totally fine with it as long as Brian Cage puts in option C and becomes the world champion. Only time will fucking tell. We then get the main event of the evening. We get Dave, Jay Chris and Dave Chris versus Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix here. Uh, a crazy match back and forth here. These guys were just going all over the fucking place. People were going insane. 
People were chanting Impact Wrestling, which I'm happy for as well. I feel like it's cool to finally see that the people that are actually at these events doing another chant besides TNA. Now it's Impact Wrestling, and I feel like that's a good sign. I'm, and again, I'm just enjoying that in particular. Uh, there's a moment, of course, where they're trying to rip the mask off of Phoenix here. But it was all said, again, it's a crazy-ass match. It's a crazy just back and forth off the fucking wall here. Um, there's a moment in this match where Pentagon reverses a tombstone attempt and literally hangs Jake on the top rope where he, where then Phoenix kills him with the top rope double stomp. And then they hit the double um, stomp package pile driver combo on Dave. And Phoenix takes Jake and Sammy out. With a dive while pending on cover day for the win. So when it's all said and done, pending on G- Phoenix got the win here over OVE. And I'm gonna say this right now again: a solid episode of Impact, a great main event. They got some good things happening with the likes of Scarlet Bordeaux. And I can't wait to see what the fuck happened this week or yeah, coming up on Impact. Um, the OGs and LX, I'm really enjoying as well. And again, I'm hoping that maybe somewhere down the road, Brian Cage, you know, invokes option C. I hope Eli Drake finally ends this fucking ridiculous program of Grado. Cause it's a waste of fucking program. I'm just saying right now for Eli Drake. He deserves better. Um and next week we're getting Eddie and this week as well, we're getting Eddie Edwards and Austin Area for the world title. So mother flowers, give me your thoughts down below the comment thread, your thoughts on this week's episode of Impact. Or this past week's episode of Impact. Because again, it's a new week right now. But you get the idea. Follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven. Make sure you like all my videos. And as always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time with the flowers. It's me. It's Steve. And I'm out with the flowers. Peace out, y'all.